Hi, we're going to look at a very important function of spinner chief called the similarity function. And this is going to show you the power of spinner chief when compared to other sof software that's available and that you may be using now. And this is very important that you listen to this and understand this because it could change the way you think and the way you operate in the future when you're spinning articles. So to demonstrate, I've got a very short weight loss article in here that I've picked up from e Ezine and just pasted in and I've, I have all the synonyms ready to go. We're going to spin the article. Now for this demonstration, we're not really concerned with whether the article makes sense or not. That's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the unique potential of the articles that we spin. So you probably know this routine, we hit spin. Now I'm going to select that we spin a f at a frequency of four. That means it's going to spin approximately every fourth word. Why do we want to do this? Well we want to spin the least amount of words possible so that the article still makes as much sense as possible, but you still have to spin so many words in order for the article to be unique when it's published and not to be hitting the supplemental results in the search engine pages. So we're going to spin with a frequency of four, and the reason we do that is that it's quite a common fact, well-known fact, that to pass Copyscape, you need to have words, strings of words that are only three the same as the article that's already published and on the net. So if you spin every fourth word, then technically you're going to get through Copyscape. And when you get through Copyscape, when you pass a Copyscape test, it's generally accepted that the article is fine for publishing and Google and the other search engines will see it as unique. So I'll click OK to that. I'm going to spin 10 articles here. I only want five, but you'll see where I'm coming from later on. So I'll click OK on that. Uh, we can see down here uh, it's spinning the articles now. And uh, as you probably know, they'll appear in front of us in a moment. There they are. Now, we have 10 articles there. And this is the function I want to show you here. Calculate similarity among spun articles. We hit that. And this is the interface we have. All articles are previously chosen, selected by default. So all I have to do is click this Calculate Similarity button. Why are we doing this? When you publish your article, you want it to be unique. The whole point of the software is to produ produce unique content. When you publish an article and you it passes Copyscape, you may think that's enough and that Google's going to love it, and that may well be true. But what if you made five copies and then later, and you publish all five copies? How do you know? that those copies are unique from each other. If you currently publish multiple spun articles, as far as we know, there is absolutely no way of checking that those articles are unique from each other. If they're unique from the original, that's fine. And you can check that by putting the article through Copyscape. But you do not know if the copies are unique from each other and when you publish them if they are not unique from each other then they're all going to end up in the supplemental results so this is what the function is for and now I've calculated similarity here and you can see here that the, all the articles are compared to each other so here article 1 is compared to article 2 etc all the way down look 3 is compared with 10 4 is compared with 5 and we get a percentage of how similar they are on this case based on whether there are four words the same in a sentence which is what copyscape uses now in our tests you need to have 
fifty per fifty odd percent or lower for the article to pass Copyscape. And you can see here that most of these are or a lot of these are sixty, seventy percent, sixteen, seventy percent, some are fifty, some are sixty, some are seventy. Now we spun that article using every fourth word, synonyms for every fourth word, and it's produced copies that are not going to pass Copyscape because they are too similar. Do you have software that spins every fourth word? Are you sure that the multiple copies you produce are going to get through Copyscape? Because these are not. Let's go back and spin again. This time, uh, sorry, we need to close that off. This time we're going to spin with a frequency of three. Now, yes, technically, everything being well, four should be enough. But things happen during the spin process. Maybe not. Maybe there isn't a synonym for every word. Maybe there are many synonyms for some of the words. The point being, in order to be sure, if you spin with an auto frequency of three, then you will have a better chance of getting of producing articles that are unique from each other. So again, there, there are the 10 articles that we've just spun this time with a frequency of 3. Now we're going to calculate the similarity. As you can see, the default is they're all selected. So we hit Calculate Similarity. And here, this setting here is saying that although we spun with a frequency of 3, in order to check whether the articles are unique or not, we're using a four-word sequence. This is what we're using to calculate similarity. Now, you can see that many of these articles now are in the 50% bracket, and only some of them are in the 60-70% bracket. What can we do about that? Well, here we can see Article 1 and Article 10 are 70% similar, and therefore they are not likely to pass Copyscape if they are both published, because one will cancel the other out. So if I click on any of these boxes, uh, Spinner Chief is going to show us the two articles and the sections that are similar. Now when you first click on these articles, it takes a little bit of time just to build up the database to be able to show you where the similarities are occurring. And what it does, it splits the sentences and paragraphs up and it uses commas and periods or full stops to split the sentences up and all of the ones that are in red are similar similar because they have four word sequences that are the same within them so you can click on one of those sequences let's start at the beginning and here we are. This is Article 1 here, look, and Article 10 here below. These are the similarities. So this first uh, section is not bad, but it's showing that there's a four-word sequence here. Losing fat and it is the same as losing fat and it in the tenth article. So if I change losing fat and it to losing fat plus it, then I can just move on to the next section. I'll change that again. Whether we gain is the same as whether we gain here. It's highlighted in red to show that it's four words of the same sequence. Whether we add, unfortunately, one sentence, one word, so it's obviously similar. So I'll change that one to regrettably. And then I'll just do one more so we can get some kind of results. Different kinds of fats. I'll change that to different types of fats. Okay, now you see this button at the bottom. Now we can save all those changes and recalculate the similarity. Now, 
before I click it, let's look again. The, the similarity is 70% and I've changed four of those similarities. So we'll recalculate, it's done. And now the similarity between the two is only 62%. So that's one way of adjusting your R spun articles so that they are unique from each other. But there's another way. Let's close this off and spin yet again. We'll get rid of these and we're going to spin yet again. We're choosing a spin frequency of three and it's going to spin our 10 articles again. And we're going to look at a different way of getting the uniqueness that we're after. So there's the 10 articles spun and let's calculate the similarity again. Know the routine by now. They're all chosen by default, so we hit the similarity button and we know what's going to happen because it happened last time. There's quite a nice lot in the 50s, which is what we need, but there's some that are too high as well. So in s if you don't want to spend time editing those articles to get the similarity percentage down, what you can do is this. So it builds up the looks at the two articles again. We're looking at article 1 and article 3. Here's article 3. What I could do is just delete it. Hit that button, gone. Simple as that. Now we can do the same. Here's another one, look. Article 1 and 4. They're 66%. So I will delete article 4. That's gone. 1 and 7. 70% similarity. Let's see that. Here's 7, article 7 at the bottom. Just delete it. Again, articles 1 and 8, we can have a look at those. And instead of editing them, just delete article 8. Are there any more? See, now most of these are in the 50s. There we are, article 5 and article 6. Let me get rid of article 6. And Spinner Chief is taking time out for a copy, coffee while it <laughs> calculates the similarity. Are there any more? Well, 5 and 10, so really we probably could do to delete article 10 as well. There we are, article 10. Similarity is re recalculated automatically when you delete. And look, now they are all in the 50%. Generally, we found that if you're in the 50s or under 50, these articles will pass copy scape and will be unique to each other. So if I close this off, I've left myself with four articles there. Four articles that in all probability, when they're published, will be unique not only from the original article that's published, but from each other. No supplemental results. This is the only software that can do this for you. And if you think about it, if you're using different software to spin a chief, the likelihood is that you are producing article after article that is not going to be unique because there is no way that you can check whether the articles you are producing are unique from each other. Spin a chief will do this for you. You need to be using spin a chief so that you're not wasting your time and so that you're maximizing your earning potential. The whole point of article spinning software is to produce unique content. If you can't check that you're producing unique content, then your software is more or less useless to you. If you're not using Spinner Chief, start using it. Thank you very much for listening. See you in the next video.